the battle for Mega Humeopolis was well underway. Gork and Mork were with Snortius this day. He could feel it. Now it was the time to break down the doors of the Humi super huts and root them out of their fortifications. Snortius rode with the remaining squig hoppers, looking for Humi stragglers to run down, while Tree Climber, Stinky, DeFast, DeFurious, Ed, Ed, and Eddie marched towards the town itself. De Brain was still a ways out with the catapult, trundling along, heading towards the next tower. He didn't want to fire on the town, as the other greenskins might have been struck just as often as the Humies. Unusually careful for a greenskin. Snotbow, on the other hand, was in the fight of his life. The Humie known as Emmett fell backwards as the rush of tiny greenskins threatened to overwhelm him. Snotbow leapt on him with his stabber, his teeth bared and snarling. The Humi held up his las gun to shield himself from Snotbow. The Humi shouted in pain as little commando snots began stabbing at his legs with their tiny little needle knives as he tried to kick them away. He threw off Snotbow and tried to bring his weapon around to fire. But Steve leapt on his arm, causing him to fire into the floor. It was an ugly brawl. Every one of the snotlings and Snotbow himself came away with nasty dark bruises, bleeding noses, and split lips. But the Humi died. He died a death of a thousand cuts as the commandos slowly wore him down and overwhelmed him. At the other end of the fields, the brain was in position to fire again. The man in the tower was distracted with the other forces entering the town, firing rapidly at the tiny green menaces. He did not see the brain approaching with the small catapults. The brain took his time, carefully lined up his shot, and soon three more jars of snot fire were streaking towards their target. One canister broke on the roof of the tower, and the other managed to fly right inside of it, bursting open and spreading the stinking flames everywhere. Screams rose from the tower as another one of the enemy bastions was destroyed. The brain grinned with satisfaction. In town, the grots and snots were going door to door. Stinky and Tree Climber chose one house and blasted open the lock with their las weapons. The Fast and the Furious moved towards a large shed. There were gaps in the planks that made the building up, and they could see all manner of interesting-looking gubbins inside. The door was chained shut, but the two grots produced axes and began hacking their way through the wooden walls. Ed, Ed, and Eddie selected another house, and they simply bashed the lock with their huge clubs. While the greenskins began their assault, the Humies had not been idle. Farmers wielding shotguns and las rifles began firing on the invaders. As soon as Tree Climber kicked in the door, he found himself face to face with a shotgun barrel. Tree Climber tried to pull up his weapon to fire, but the Humi only needed to pull a trigger. If it were not for the sacrifice of the wise Sun Tzu, the Snotling, Tree Climber would have been grot paced, but the tiny green skin put himself between the blast and his boss, and for his effort, he was quickly turned to a gory paste by the blast. Tree Climber himself was not completely protected as a cloud of pellets still managed to embed themselves in his good shooting arm. The mutant snot stumbled backwards only to be caught by Stinky. Tree Climber, how could they do this to you? How could they do this to my best friend? 
I don't know if I'll call us friends is that? You'll pay for hurting me, friend! With that, Stinky charged forward to avenge Tree Climber, blasting away the Humie in the doorway with his Laz shooter. The other Humie fired another shotgun blast that sailed over Stinky's head. The enraged green skin leapt at the man, with the rest of the snotlings following suit, and he clocked him under the chin with the butt of his rifle, knocking the man off his feet. Then he was quickly swarmed as Stinky continued to smash his skull over and over again until he lay still. Meanwhile, DeFast and DeFurious had gotten their hands on a couple of Humi tractors and figured out how to get them running. Greenskins have a kind of genetic memory and some instinctual understanding of technology once they're exposed to this. This, coupled with reckless trial and error, served the two grot leaders well as the engines roared to life. Within a few moments, the tractors plowed through the shed door with whooping and hollering snotlings, brandishing their bows and atlatls, clinging to every side. As if in response to the belching tractors, suddenly a massive humey truck emerged from a side road and menaced the hollering green skins. Da fast! intoxicated with the power of his looted vehicle, shouted in defiance. Come and get some, Yumi's! You can't beat family! War! The greenskins gunned their engines, and the Humies did likewise, honking their war horn on the truck as they sped towards collision. De Fast's tractor struck first, and the machine was utterly destroyed, crushed by the massive size of the Humi war truck. Snotlings scattered everywhere, flung like rag dolls, while DeFast himself flew forward, crashing through the windshield of the Humi vehicle and into the passenger's side. Just like that, Da Fast was dead, along with most of his snots. Bone cruncher, grabby fingers, punchin' bag too, and crawl git. Most died instantly. Only Squigbait was safely thrown free and survived the collision. Then, Da Furious had his turn, and slammed into the Humi truck, causing the trailer to swing around behind it, twisting the truck around and causing it to flip over. The snotling, Snottius the Third, was flung forward and rolled down the hood of the tractor just as the truck tipped over, crushing him beneath. Da Furious was angry, Furious, even, as he leapt off the tractor and hopped on top of the passenger side of the truck. There was one dead Humi inside on the passenger end, and the driver Humi fumbled with a shotgun. The Furious leapt at him, axe in hand. But the Humi got the shot off, blowing the Furious's leg clean away. But nothing could keep you going like vengeance for family. With bites, claws, and axe blows, the Furious brought the Humi low. Revenge for the Fast, whom Furious cradled in his arms. Tree Climber had managed to limp off towards the Brain's unit, not really being able to fight any longer. The brain had his catapults facing the final tower. He made his final adjustments and fired. The brain and his crew were getting better and more skilled with each shot. This time, each and every one of the snot fire jaws were on target 
and the tower exploded in a veritable fireball, eliminating the last of the Humi bulwarks. As Tree Climber approached with his mangled arm, Debrain started treating it. Fortunately for Tree Climber, Debrain had been working on a new fungal paste formula for treating wounds. After cleaning and wrapping it, Tree Climber's flesh began to rapidly knit together. He flexed his fingers, and while his arm was not quite 100%, he would undoubtedly be able to tree climb once more. But now it was time to end this conflict. Snotius wheeled Pog Chomp around and made for the town hall as mayhem spread through the streets of the settlement. As Snotius rode, he fired at a Humi that showed its face in the window, taking it down with a clean shot to the chest with his Laz shooter. As Snotius reached the door of the town hall, Snotbo emerged from a side street with his commandos, looking a bit battered and bruised. Looks like you had a good scrap, Snotbo. I like it better when they don't see me coming. Well, they's gonna see us coming on this one. Help me bash that door down. We gotta kill the last of the humans in this super boss hut. With a single high-powered blast from Snotius, the Laz shooter broke the lock and both mutant snotlings kicked forward and the massive doors swung wide to reveal three armed humies inside. Snotius hopped on Pogchomp and tried to close the gap before they could fire. He missed with his lance, but Pogchomp leapt on him and bit hard into the Humi's midsection, giving him a furious death shake until he stopped moving. Two shotgun blasts ripped through the snotling ranks from the remaining Humi's. Snotgar was obliterated, and Bashskull, who had been carrying the burner tank, was also blasted to pieces. Fortunately, the tank didn't rupture, and Snore Sleeper took his place, assuming carrying duties. In revenge for the death of his partner, Soggy pointed the burner at the offending Humi and bathed him in Prometheum as he screamed in agony before Snortius put him out of his misery with a charging stab from his lance. The final Humi. Seeing that he was completely alone and surrounded by vicious, well-armed greenskins, threw down his weapon and held up his hands in surrender. Snartius strode up to the Humi, looking eye to eye with him from the back of Pogchomp. Snartius sneered at him. You thought you could be bigger than Snort Antinople. You thought you could be bigger than me? I'm the biggest here. I'm the boss. And here, the green skins, he's now in charge. Wah! Do they call me? My mother and my father, and all my comrades as well. Thank you all for listening to the latest episode of Growing the Tribe. If you enjoyed what you heard, please drop a like and a comment, so that one day you can build your own wall and march to glory. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do so in order to hear more stories about tiny green men slaying taller normal men. If you would like to support me, there are links to my Teespring, my Patreon, and my PayPal in the description. And if you have absolutely no idea what's going on, you can click on the Growing the Tribe playlist, which should be appearing on screen right now. Thank you all once again for listening. No Man Out.